now moving to the digestion of fats in small intestine when we are talking about the digestion of fats we say fats are broken down by lipases this we have done when we were doing the intestinal juice enzymes we did their antileukinase with the dipeptidases aminopeptidases lipases nucleotidases nucleosidases and disaccharidases if you remember over there we did this lipase also which is responsible for the conversion of fats into simple diglycerides and monoglycerides so we say lipids or the tri glycerides are converted by the action of this lipase into diglycerides as well as fatty acids clear now this diglycerides and fatty acids it will be acted upon by again lipase and further getting converted into fatty acid as well as glycerol along with the formation of monoglyceride so we say here the lipase of the intestinal juice also converting diglycerides into monoglycerides along with fatty acids again the action is done by lipase then monoglycerides further acted upon by lipase and is converted to fatty acid as well as glycerol clear here the end product is fatty acid and glycerol right moving to digestion of nucleic acid the nucleic acids which are dna or rna these are acted upon by the nucleases and are getting converted to nucleotides right so these nucleic acids when acted upon by nuclease are converted to nucleotides these nucleotides are further acted upon by nucleotidase enzyme into nucleoside as well as the phosphate bond this free phosphate bond will get eliminated and the nucleoside means now the nitrogenous base as well as sugar component are left behind for its further action moving to its action we say that the intestinal juice now contains nucleosidases so this nucleoside is acted upon by nucleo sides and is converted to the nitrogenous base along with sugar this sugar is a pentose sugar okay here the complete conversion into this product takes place further moving on to the disaccharides we have learned that there are disaccharides in our food which is a unit which has come from carbohydrates now these disaccharides are acted upon by further set of enzymes here sucrose is acted upon by sucrase and is converted to glucose as well as fructose unit then maltose is acted upon by maltase enzyme and is converted into glucose as well as glucose units 
then is lactose it is acted upon by lactase you have to remember as everywhere as is for the enzyme it is getting converted into galactase as well as glucose so everywhere glucose is there along with fructose galactose finally the end products or the final products of digestion are fatty acid and glycerol right then secondly fructose glucose fructose as well as galactose and not to forget amino acids clear when all these are finally moving to the large intestine what happens in the large intestine we are quite familiar that there is no digestion takes place in the large intestine when no digestion is taking place so what is happening what are the main functions of large intestine large intestine mainly responsible for the absorption so we say this one is responsible for absorption absorption of water minerals and certain drugs then we say it is also responsible for the secretion process what secretion secretion of certain mucus why because it will help in adhering the fecal matter together and that is stored finally into the rectum region of the large intestine so large intestine mainly meant for absorption as well as secretion right so this is how the digestion takes place